that I need a bigger desk. I need more space on my desk. I need more space on my desk. Or I need like a secondary table. I need something because my desk is not, my headphones are, oh, pfft. I don't know, it looks like I have bangs. Hi, I'm live, hello. I'm live. It is the last Sunday of the month. So it's booze bake. So I have a drink, which I was just talking about. I barely have enough space on my desk for this drink. I need a bigger desk or I need a little side table or something. Uh, I did put a link in the community tab to the movie that I want to watch. A lot of you guys suggested suggested um, Cicely Tyson some Cicely Tyson movies. Um, and I actually never saw this one and I never heard of this woman either. So I thought this might be a nice little transition also into Hidden Figures. Hi, oops, hi. Hi Queen, hi Hush420. Hi Jules, booze bacon, it's snowing, let's go. Hi Nicole, hi Alexandra, hi Katie. Hi Trey, you made it. Hi Alexia, I'm good, how are you doing? Hi, Queen. Hi, Kimberly Frazier. Hi, Chris. Spicy mango margaritas. Got a, ha a hangover. Hi, Olivia. You weren't sure if what was happening. Bees bake? Why would it not be? I know I didn't do it week before last, but that was for a different reason. Hi, Natalia. Hi, Southern Soul Sorcery. Hi, Deb the Wise. Hi, One Eye. There's a link in the community tab to the film. It's called The Marvel Collins True Story. I don't know if that's the exact name of it, but that's the title of the link on YouTube that I'm gonna be using um, that I posted in the community tab. Yeah, The Marvel Collins True Story. And I literally just started, it's been like two minutes. Hi, Deb. Oh, your paper? Just was browsing the community tab for the movie. Yes, it's there. What are organic horse burgers? <laughs> like horse meat? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi, Francesca. Fin finally finishing out this long ass month. Hi, Aquarius. Hi, Ori. Even though I'm sure you're trolling, but like, what is this? If you were an athlete, would you eat organic horse burgers? What? Would you eat organic horse burgers? <laughs> Time check, we have not started yet. I've only been on for three minutes. So, I just started. I just started live stream. Would you eat organic horse burgers, Crown Prince 186? Would you eat horse meat? <laughs> Hi Vans. Hi Brooke. Uh, yeah, I am a pescatarian. <laughs> yes, you would eat horse meat. Why? What did the horse do to you? Is that, is that what happens with the meat after the, the horse goes to the glue factory? They send the meat to you and you turn it into sandwiches? Do you tell people in advance before you hand out the horse meat sandwiches what it is? Is this like a Taco Bell situation? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Nova. Hi, the boy in blue. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going along with this obvious, like, troll attempt. Let's just, you know, let's just, like, right, let's just, like, go along with it, right? Let's just, like, entertain it for a moment while people come in and uh, I get ready to watch this movie. I mean, I guess it's, like, good that we're not wasting the meat, the horse meat, right? Part of the horse, what do they use to make the glue, the hooves? used to the, for the glue and some of it becomes weave and some of it becomes soy sauce and now we have a horse meter among us. You know, 
that's not wasteful. You know, cheers to you because waste not, want not. How's everyone doing? I see people want to uh, come in with nonsense. So, you know, has it been a nonsense month for people? Hi, Ori. When I, I speak good health, joy, peace, and abundant life into everyone present today. I have a sense of humor, so, you know, I will turn that shit into a joke. Horse burgers, <laughs> vans. Brooke, we're watching the Marva Collins True Story. I haven't started yet. I did put a link in the community tab for anyone that wants to watch along. We're watching on YouTube. I am pescatarian, Jules. I don't even eat red meat. Is is horse meat, would that be considered red meat? How, how deep down this uh, rabbit hole are we willing to go today, guys? Hi, Savannah. Raise, and there's Raisy Crandom Girl. Hi, the boy in blue. Leave the poor horses alone. Horse meat sandwiches, Dev the Wise hits join again. <laughs> Not even an ethical meat either. Horse lasagna, horse spaghetti. Hi, Meech. That's my favorite joke from All Dogs Go to Heaven. I love that. You know, I love that movie, Noah. Hi, Bushy Brows. Hi, Vanity. Cheers. This movie looks really good. I've never seen it. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I felt like it would be nice to honor Cicely Tyson, but also like a good one for the start of Hidden Figures. Damn the videos. Hanging on. I'm doing okay. <laughs> you are glue. It's booze big, right? Let's talk about horse burgers. I do want to start. Um, so I do eat in, uh, what is it? What is, what is the, what are they called? Now I can't think of the word. Uh, not Beyond Meat, but the other one. I eat the other kind of burgers. That's like not meat. Incredible. Why, why do I want to call them incredible burgers? I feel like that's not what they're fucking called. Whatever they're called. Impossible. That's what they're called. Thank you. I eat the impossible burgers and I want to start eating the Beyond Meat at home. I've never, I'm not sure how to prepare it. I feel a little intimidated by preparing it, but I want to try it and see if I can like mess around with it at my house. Yeah, that's it. Impossible. Impossible me. Thank you guys. Uh, Vanity Bushy Brows. This, today's film is the Marvel Collins story. The link is in the community post. Um, I have not started yet. I'm probably going to go ahead and start in a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm doing good. I've seen this movie a while back. It's a great movie. I knew there was a reason I hated Taco Bell. I'm justified. I really, truly believe that Taco Bell is horse meat and rat meat. I just, I really do. Hi, Monica. Monica said, wow, y'all are on one already. I, I like horses. Leave them alone. Uh, oh, wow. Are you okay, Kimberly? I can't believe we lost Cicely Tyson, man. R.I.P. Yeah, no, it's it's easy. You've done it, Queen. Don't be. It's very easy. I like the Impossible Burgers. How do you used to do? You, you don't prepare it like regular meat. How does it cook like quicker? I'm curious. I guess I just have to like try it out. But hi, Bree. We're watching the Marvel Collins True Story. I put a link in the community tab. They're, I, I don't know why I kept wanting to say incredible. I was like, that's not it, <laughs> Monica. Is it possible to enjoy Impossible Burgers? I enjoy them. I eat them. I like them. It's just like regular meat. My dad loves those Impossible Burgers. First time he had one, he couldn't shut up about it. I really like them. I think they're pretty good. Um, and I haven't had like a red meat burger in like forever. But I did used to eat turkey burgers. And I do like it. I feel like it's a good alternative. I really like them a lot. It cooks really fast too. <laughs> the horse and rat meat from Taco Bell be slapping. Ew, bushy brass. Beyond Meat is soy free. They have a new product that tastes much better because they changed up the ingredients. Mm hmm. I see. Um, I'm going to get ready to start the movie. So let me just go ahead and block you. Horse meat eater. Because I don't want to be seeing that once we start. It was funny for right now, though. Uh, this is why I make my own Taco Bell at home. When you buy it, it's by the regular meat. You cook it like regular meat, but I think it may cook quicker. It actually cooks the same 
It's like a pound. You put it in the pan. It crumbles as you cook. You can form it into patties, balls, etc. Could you use it in like pasta? Or how does it work? I just got over COVID. Oh, you had COVID, Francesca? Oh my gosh. My appetite is not 100 yet. This combo is not helping. Hi, Kyrie. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying for people that eat Taco Bell, that's what I think it is. Yeah, block. Turkey burgers are basically the only burgers I haven't cooked anymore. Taco Bell makes me sick. I never ate Taco Bell. Mm. I mean, you guys don't like Demolition Man? They talk about rat burgers. I really think like, and they talk about Taco Bell. Subliminal, subliminal. Maybe that's why I have like a subliminal like connection in my mind between like rat meat and like Taco Bell because you guys know I love Demolition Man. But for some reason, I've always had an association with like Taco Bell and rats. I'm going to go ahead and start this movie. The Marva Collins True Story. I'm watching it on YouTube. I did post a link in the community tab. I do have my drink because it's booze bake. We've already started with people talking about they eat horse sandwiches. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hi, Align 10 Mint. Happy birthday. Play. I pushed play. You want to bring up oodles and noodles? I hate oodles and noodles. Hi, Corey. Nineteen seventy five. Stay, Trey, don't leave. Mm. I haven't eaten Taco Bell in years. Good for tacos. I'd say it works in pot. Yeah, like meatballs and spaghetti. Yes, like that, Queen. Like, can I put it in there? I had ground turkey and spaghetti. Let's just say I'd rather eat giant noodles. What? Oh my gosh. It was really hard for me to quit eating turkey because I used to use turkey in everything like turkey sausage for breakfast, turkey bacon, ground turkey and pasta. I'd make turkey burgers at home. I like, I used to eat so much turkey. But then when I decided to like fully go pescatarian, I was like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat for breakfast? It hasn't been that hard though because. I eat more seafood than previously. Oh yeah, Morgan Freeman. I eat more fish with noodles now. I was already eating fish and spaghetti. I really haven't been cooking regardless since lockdown. Really? I feel like I've been cooking more. Oh no. Hi Rico. About to eat some crap. Look at Sicily looking good. I hate oodles and noodles, they're too salty. Something about oodles and noodles smells like piss to me. Just something about it. I've never been able to eat oodles and noodles. I've always been like, oh, it smells like pee. When I was young, I used to be like, it smells like pee pee. I don't want to eat it. Oh, look. Look at young Morgan Freeman. Yes, ma'am. Oh, they cute. How old is Morgan Freeman in real life? I've never seen Morgan young. Yes, he's young. Like you should have cereal in your mouth, not smart remarks. Oh, look at the jacket. Oh, y'all know I'm about to be the whole movie talking about the clothes. Look at Sicily looking good. The coat already. My dad didn't know how to cook, so he would always make us noodles and hot dogs. My mom didn't cook. She would always make me scrambled eggs and spaghetti. And now she's like so into cooking. It's so funny. Yeah, you could form in the pound for meatballs. It'll work for that. I'm definitely going to try it, the Beyond Meat. I put chicken breasts in my noodles. Look at her giving her little poetry. 
bureaucratic red tape and apathetic teachers when it comes to black kids in the educational system sounds about right. Thanksgiving turkey makes me sleepy. I think it's, they've said that like turkey releases like, I don't know, serotonin or melatonin, something. It releases something into your black blood that makes you sleepy. Oh, she's teaching them about propaganda. Okay. We're, we're not even five minutes in. She's telling the little black kids, you better think for yourselves. Trip to fan. That's it. That's not what turned Olivia into a mutant in French. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Olivia. <laughs> I know that was Cortexafan, guys. I know what it was called. Oh my God. You guys remember these stripes that they used to have in schools? I feel like they have these stripes in my elementary school. These stripes on the wall. He definitely pulled the fire alarm. It's a cute little outfit she got on. This beige with this tan jacket. Wow, she gonna keep them in there with this fucking alarm going off and keep teaching? Teachers meeting today. He said, let me pull this fire alarm real quick. Hi, Chariot Man Gaming. Mm, hi, Diego. I'm trying to become a vegetarian, but it's hard. Diego, we're watching the Marvel Collins True Story. I put a link in the community tab. Wow, the sixth one this week. Hi, Armand. Yeah, I'm cooking a lot more now. I'm all cooked out. I'm tired of it. I've become a DoorDash fiend along with my mom. But once I move out, I'm going to have to stop. I am so, I'm so picky, man. It's ridiculous. It used to just make my mother lose her mind. I'm very picky. Picky pack. I love the 70s. My college is actually on campus this semester, so I've been eating cafeteria food. Look at all these, like... Uh, these teachers, it's not funny. Morgan Freeman is 83 now. Oh man, I'm pissed. Why you do one of my favorite treats like that? She got my grandma's 70s hairstyle. Okay, poem. Uh, Cicely Tyson is like, nobody wants to teach. Nobody wants to teach the kids. Nobody cares about the kids. Wow, we're in a ghetto. These children don't want to learn. Ooh. Wow. Wow, she talking about her clothes. Ooh. Yes. Tell her. Yes, Caddy. Talk about she dressed up strutting through the halls quoting Shakespeare. Bitch, why you mad? Are you mad because I know the classics and you don't? Not that it matters, but you jealous. Salty. Uh, all that salt. Yes, I do have a lot to do, which is why I needed to get handled. Uh, speak on it. She's like, I just, I'm just trying to teach the kids. Mm. I've been double time eating from a place called Izzy's. What are you ordering? Oh, look at this beautiful stained glass in their house. Tell her stop looking at me. I'm not looking at him. I'm looking through him. These kids are so cute. Did you feel physically different after becoming a pescatarian? I've always wondered that about vegans as well. I definitely felt like I had more energy. That's probably the main difference though. But I did feel like I had more energy. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot, Dad. 
Wow. Uh, I've really never seen this look on Morgan Freeman before. He's really giving me old pimp from Memphis, which is what he is. Clarence. She's giving dark academia looks. I live. The words Rome and Brutus were painted on the board. Brutus is part of a group that used propaganda to justify the killing of Julius Caesar. Wow, she wants to open her own school. Yes, I liked her glasses too, Deb. Glasses everywhere. My little sis is beyond picky. Drives me insane because I do most of the cooking. Monica, we can't help it. Last time is for teaching. Marvel calling him out. Heifer, we are in the ghetto. The 70s is the one era that if I had to time travel, I'd do it. Everything else, I don't know. But even the 70s is a little questionable. I think I would time travel to the 70s, Brooke. I think the 70s, especially like the mid to late 70s, right before the 80s, like 77, we're like a solid decade removed from like the 60s and like the civil rights era. And we had a lot of like, you know, calling white people honky to their face and stuff like that, which I appreciate. Look at all these beautiful black babies. Keep your arms and your legs to yourself. Go to your class. This uppity white woman, she's so salty. She, hating ass bitch, green with envy. She, she needs to teach at a white school then. Somebody come get Karen. <laughs> Hi, Amari. Morgan's so tall and lanky. Oh, wow. Somebody messed up her classroom. She definitely needs to open her own school. She has a picture of Einstein on the wall. Young Morgan Freeman is tripping me out. Not an old pimp. Morgan was that guy. Honestly, I'm still tripping on how young Morgan Freeman looks. They look so good together. I do love latkes. I do love potato pancakes. He's a pencil. The 70s had a lot going on. I hate that people don't acknowledge Marva and her work. This is horrible. They like really messed up the classroom. This is like traumatizing for the kids. Like nobody wants these kids to learn. Like they really mad that Marva wants the kids to learn. It was the fashion for me. I'm not going past 1989. That's only because I'd want to see what my parents were like young. Right? I'm, I'm very interested to see how the 70s would be like. The 70s joining the Panthers. I see how they vandalized her classroom. I would time travel to the 70s just so I could set, check out the fashion and nightclubs of that time. We will never let others stop us from learning. Haters. Probably that white woman. The fact that it was like probably the other teachers is so sad. If I could dance on Soul Train, yeah, that's a dream. <laughs> Jules is like, where's the time machine? These white teachers are making my skin crawl. These people are wild. I'd be hot, classroom tore up, tore up. Like they didn't even erase her stuff off the board. They like scribbled over it. I'd be hot, classroom tore up. It was that Karen teacher who trashed the classroom. Some teachers speak just like that to children, horrible. Disco. She is still teaching. She's like, you're the most important children. Mm, she's giving them a good life lesson right now. I love how she's trying to keep the energy up. Talking about the myths. Microaggressions everywhere. She's like reading out loud. 
It was the best of times and worst of times. I bet it was that catty bitch talking crazy. That messed up classroom is so demoralizing. Yeah, keep ripping up our class so it isn't the first time. Why do they keep ripping up our class? Whoever did it had the key. Hi, Tierra. We're watching uh, the Marva Collins True Story. I'm watching it on YouTube. I did put a link in the community tab. I'm at about 14 minutes in. Hi, world lover. The classroom is that baby's one safe place. She's preaching. Tom Piers, I would travel 20s and 70s. I think I traveled to the 1920s also and the 70s also, hush 420. I feel like I those would be my periods I'd want to see as well. Wow, she's really going to teach, she's going to start her own school. Breaking down walls. Look at her red hat and her red scarf. Morgan is tall and lanky. She really wants to start this school out of her house. The neighborhood. Look at them walking by the water. So she's just gonna have the community, the community kids come to her. Wow. You go ahead, Morgan Freeman. Wow. Yay, he's really supporting her. That's nice. I didn't know he was in this. Plan her husband. Um, teachers like her are the best. Erasing takes too much work. It's easier to just scribble their lazy vandals. I like 20s fashion and slang. I definitely like to see some shows at the Apollo in the 90s. Young Cicely reminds you of your aunt, Bushy Brows. I love how caring and uplifting she is. The music's making you emotional, Brie. Teaching is a talent. These black kids look so excited seeing the rocket. Oh, I made a rocket once in physics in high school. Memories. Look at them. She does look really petite, doesn't she? 1920s had nice music and clothes, but I'll be damned if I go there, said Nicole. The fashion. Such a good looking couple. I have to sneeze. <coughs> okay, that was it. Gotta wear my scarves like that. Hi, Jaren. Jaren said he would travel with weapons to when they started slavery and get busy if you had a time machine. Tall and lanky, just my type. <laughs> yes, the Marvel Collins School. Saroon would be hanging out with Ma Rainey. I'm going to tell my friend about this movie. She's basically trying to do the same thing and in Chicago too. Oh, yeah, send it. Oh, I don't need a license. Anybody can start a school. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. I see. Recognition. Oh, a check. She said, I don't need no recognition. I already know who I am, Deb. She, ooh. Hi. Mm, I see. Hi, Chris. Oh, thank you. Mm. Yep. Bureaucracy. <laughs> if you're illiterate, you can't fill out the forms. A supportive boo. Morgan Freeman is young and supportive. We love a supportive husband. <laughs> Get you a man like Morgan. 
Not gonna lie, Morgan looking this young is freaking me out. I always thought of him as a perpetually old man. The scribbling was to make a louder statement. The music is emotional. Put your jacket on. Okay, waist. Okay, waist. That belt. She got that thing just cinched. They getting ready. <laughs> if your man doesn't put wood on top of his station wagon for your dreams, you don't need him. Hi, Blue Sneakers. We're watching the Marvel Collins True Story. I'm watching it on YouTube. I did put a link in the community tab if you want to watch along. We're about 20 minutes in. I'm at 1928 exactly. They're getting ready to set up the school. They're getting ready to knock down this wall. Oh, look, they're all doing it together. That's cute. Aw. West Side Preparatory School. West Side Prep. Woo! Bang this wall down. This is so triumphant. Who thought that destroying a wall would feel so good? Oh, they're like taking books out of the garbage. Hurry up. They're putting books in the little wagon. Yes, they just throw books away. I was listening to the radio and I heard about this art project that this did that this dude did where he set up like a phone line where people could call in and like scream. He had it like linked to the presidential campaign. So it was like during a limited window of time. But he said that like people called in, they scream, they said all types of things. They sent well wishes. He said he was like shocked the amount of people that like said things that were positive. He thought it was going to be more people saying horrible things. But he was like most people just called in and just like screamed or had their kids scream or they just like talk. They just like need somebody to talk to. Cause it's like a, you're talking to like an answering machine. It's not a person. He did review them. And I think he said he's gonna put some of them up on like a, like an audio archive online. It kind of reminded me of a, of in Watchmen when you could like call and leave a message for Dr. Manhattan. It was something like that. I think it was called like just scream or just yell, something like that. He said a lot of people talked about COVID. Oh, he caught one of them. Breaks through the window. Hmm. Why would you do that? So why would you do that? Look, she like reached him in a totally different way than Morgan Freeman, who had his ass roughed up against the wall. Two totally different techniques. Oh, he said he didn't even know it was her house. They just throwing rocks just for fun. Her approach was more effective. Mm. Where was I? Uh, Morgan is one of the goats. People need to put respect on this man's name. He's one of the best ever at his craft. Wow, they're actively ignoring her. And then Morgan later went on as the principal to Eastside High and lean on me. Anyone could start a school. I think I would time travel just to see my family members back then. <laughs> Bushy Brown said, who like I'm tall and lanky. Hi. 
hydrating. There's Chris. I already know who I am. Say that again. So basically, the school needs to be credited. Mm. Uh, well, I was still in school for a minute. I convinced myself I wanted to teach, but then I realized I didn't like kids or any age group. Uh, all right, Sicily with the shade waist. Yes. And there's blue sneakers. Love seeing black supportive love and relationship relationships in film a rarity nowadays. Man, say that, Kimberly. They just throw books away. The destruction is cathartic. They're both so attractive. It's a great release, I imagine, tearing down a wall. Look, she's going around. She's going around trying to like recruit kids. She's like, I'm starting my own school. The real Marva Collins appears in Prince's The Most Beautiful Girl in the World video. Martin, why are you so angry? Martin, this is that's what you need. You know I was listening to the radio, Queen. Why would he throw away perfectly good books? Break through the window. These badass kids. <laughs> Morgan chasing them kids. I knew someone would do something. One of the high schools I went to had to discard its older, outdated books. Thankfully, they were giving them away, but most got trashed. I love her energy. She appealed to him. Seems pretty cool and relieving. Being able to call and, and scream into the phone, right? Pay what you can. She let them pay what they slide and scale. The beautiful stained glass. He got a lot of anger and is too young to understand how to properly express or channel it. It's a very good way to discipline kids. Uh, she's a truly loving spirit. Could it be me? Everybody can't need a teacher. Some kids need the James Evans method and some kids need what Cicely Tyson just did. Hi, avant-garde. It was a nice project. Oh, a timestamp queen. I'm at 26.05. Oh, yep, they, board, they boarded up the beautiful stained glass that got broken. Martin, shut the fuck up. Martin wanna read and he can't. That's why he angry. Yes, a six pack of lightning. I heard that phrase too, Deb. I was like, look at that phrase. Martin is just a little misunderstood is all. He's angry because he's being stunted and he knows it. Gang busted it. They do have a lot of food. Everybody keep telling her she live in the ghetto. She's the perfect teacher, kind, empathetic, passionate about teaching. They cast the perfect kid for Martin. He's expressive with that little angry face. Wow, look what they did to the upstairs. They did a nice job. It does look good. It looks nice. I like these curtains they put in. Everybody's really hating on her about this neighborhood. Like everybody just wants her to leave and abandon shit. And she's trying, she's like, no, I'm trying to make the neighborhood better. Like I care about the neighborhood. Come on now. Why is everybody hating? You giving up your retirement money. Mm-hmm. So she's gonna homeschool her own kids too. The renovation, that's amazing. They really did a good job. Sis wants to be of service to her own community. And everybody's mad. 
She just knows it's going to work. At, she's like, it's going to work. I just know it's going to work. I like this movie. I like the message of sending. Me too, Bushy Brows. Look at her sister. Her sister fashionable too. Everybody in the family is a fashionista. Yes, I love her sister. Her sister's coat. She got a little full-length corduroy. Oh. <laughs> I hope that's not an omen. <laughs> wow, look, he bought some desks for her. Sis wants to be a service to her own community. It's easier for folks to leave instead of stay and work on building things up. This is our black class politics now. I love that code on sis. Her kids are dressed too. Why is everybody asking this black educator to leave her community in order to make a change? Right, like girl, you live in the ghetto. Just like abandon this ghetto. She's like, no, what the hell? Like the only person that supported her is Morgan Freeman. Hi, David. I want her sister's jacket. Once they get on game, they leave and never look back. I like that yellow scarf. My dad said some of this was filmed in Pittsburgh. Wow. Oh, you know, I believe that because like where they're at right now looks like Pittsburgh more than Chicago. Hi, Phoebe. We're watching the Marvel Collins True Story. I put a link in the community tab to it on YouTube. I'm at about 30 minutes and 20 seconds. They're setting... They're setting up the room right now. Five students. Well. All right. That is a nice code in that pen. He said he remembers it being filmed. I, I read an article um, a couple days back was a list of HBU, HBCUs and there were like two or three universities that have permanently shut down. I had no idea that station wagon is putting in work. People look down on you if you're from the ghetto and especially if you continue to try to stay there and improve it. Yep, exactly Rico. The school is nice. Classroom looks nice as fuck. It definitely looks better than her old classroom she had at the public school. Cozy little classroom. How come they're not making movies with this message right now? Why do you think? I'm, I really want to know. Why do you guys think? I really hope this doesn't interfere with her marriage. I'm rooting for these two so far. The classroom is beautiful. The sharpener on the wall is bringing back memories. They put makeup on him to cover his freckles. She gave him a little coupon for some back rubs. Oh, is it time? Is it time? Did somebody just get there? He's like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep in front of the TV. Her eyes are shining. Most of the inner city urban school movies now have white saviors. Her husband is a carpenter. They don't want to see him what black people are capable of. They don't want children to have pride in themselves. They used to make movies like this nonstop, but always with a white savior. Hmm, why aren't they making movies like this anymore? Well, for one, it's a positive message. They rather perpetuate the message of leaving the hood. Also, that leaves room for gentrification. That's what Bushy Brow said. Welcome to Westside Preparatory School. Who's, 
you are your most valuable asset. Yes. The school does look beautiful. Time check. 33.50. This it. This lady is beautiful. Oh, wow. Yes, like this woman is so sad. She wants her daughter to go to this school. They let her go through the whole year and then just told her she was failing. Oh gosh, that's so sad. And she's only 10. Well, her mom took her to a psychiatrist. Wow, mom, wow. You better go ahead, mom. Said it was trauma. She's trying to do what's best. Go ahead, mom. Trying to figure out what's going on. And she paid her. And she paid her. You see, Marva keeps saying, I know it's going to work out. She's like, please take this money. Um, because white capitalism and the continued extraction of resources requires black tokenism and not collective uplift. That's the lady from Night Court. As a childhood educator, this is really hit at home for me. Yeah, Alexandra. Gosh, she's lovely. Dangerous minds, freedom riders, white saviors all day. They don't want any films like this unless there's a white overseer, I mean savior, to shuffle the black children along. I always told myself growing up that I would never leave where I was raised to move into some neighborhood with elitist racist neighbors. I feel safer around black people. Marsha is acting. And they don't want us to have pride in ourselves. They try they busy trying to browbeat us with interracial relationships. This woman is on the verge of tears already. Damn, what is it? It's a failing on the school's part. The talent is pouring out the screen. She's tall and pretty. So much beauty on screen right now. You know how that feels, yikes. Hi, Veja. Marvas of the world invest in black children totally because our kids need it. There's also a very relevant message how trauma can interfere with youth development. I love it. Yes, with the monies. Whoever's shooting this movie is doing it with love. The scene is reminding me of my auntie helping out this one little girl who thought she was dumb, but she really had dyslexia, but her original teacher was too lazy to look into it. Mm hmm. This is a really nice classroom that they set up. It's like an actual classroom upstairs. There's a movie that came out a few years back with Viola Davis and Maggie Gyllenhaal. I think it's based on a true story. They decided to open their own school because both their kids are struggling. Oh, I had I never heard of that. I hadn't heard of that movie. I like that tall, pretty lady. We need more tall, pretty ladies. She, oh, he's handsome. <laughs> oh, they a lovely couple. I want to cry. This movie. Oh, gosh. Look at the daughter in the back. Oh. 
She wasn't learning nothing. Sir, let that baby go to the school. Yes, her hair. She's so cute. She got some kids, though. She got a couple kids. It's called Won't Back Down, the movie with Viola Davis and Maggie Gyllenhaal. This kid in the back can't even, she can't even sit still. Mm. Oops. I want to cry. This movie. This is random, but I always hated the way writing on a chalkboard felt. Let the baby go to school. The casting taste. This little girl's hair is so cute. Her barrettes. Poor little girl in the back seat. The baby, I'm gonna cry. Let the little baby learn. No baby work here. The little girl looks so cute and sad. The bangs and the earrings. Oh, they got a, ooh, she got the work cut out. Martin, shut up. She's so nice. I'd be like, Martin, shut up. Mm. Oh, you heard? Yes. Like, you're here for a reason. She affirmed her. Give that sad little girl a hug and some lemonade. No, I haven't heard about it, Vans. Any of that stuff, Martin. This is the absolute epitome of it takes a village to raise a child. She told him it's a free country. <laughs> It's a free country, Martin. You have a right to fail. It's up to you. Right, all this tapping. <laughs> Sassy. Stop tapping that pencil before I take it. They trying her. See, these kids and these mouths, I don't have the patience. She's preaching right now. Don't make me break out the ruler. <laughs> the patience she has. Pick it up. Look. Stop tapping. Now pick it up. She's looking at him right in his eyes. Like I said, pick it up. She's exerting authority. Like, I'm the adult. You're the kid. You're going to pick it up. She patient as a damn monk. I would have been with him side of his head. Look. What is he doing with the eraser? The patience she has. They watching. <laughs> you can fail quietly. They gonna learn. Right, Mrs. Collins? She has patience. She's getting to him. She's patient as, patient as a damn monk. I would have been when I'm sad. His head, sorry. Right, <laughs> literally my house, Brooke. Like, you're literally in my house. <laughs> she gave him a gift. She gave him a book, Mrs. Collins. She listened when he said he wanted to fly. Fly high. <laughs> she is an angel. She's definitely serving Mother Teresa. Like, she has the patience of a saint.
She like gave him a little book to warm him up. She knows some of the alphabet. She's definitely not like embarrassing them or ridiculing them, which I'm sure is making a difference. You really do be having kids like that though. Sometimes they're not trying to be disrespectful. They can't comprehend their anger and or the trauma that they're experiencing at home. This just reminded me, I recently watched, uh, I watched Where the Wild Things Are, which I love that movie and I hadn't seen it in a while. And I feel like that was a big theme of that movie too. This kid is like so angry and he just like doesn't know where to put all this anger. He just like, Acts out. <laughs> 30 lashes with a wet noodle. She had dyslexia and once she was my auntie, once my auntie worked with her, the little girl started to excel. Her mom felt so guilty. She loves these children. You have to love children to teach them. She's great with children, man. She talked slower, Martin. She talks with so much kindness and care. It's beautiful. Slower, Martin. The world needs more teachers like this. Oh, look, she said, we don't say wrong. She said it's a, it was a good try. Together we'll make it right. We don't say wrong. Martin, if you don't sit your ass down, I want to throw something at this child through my screen. She asked him, do he want to come up here and teach? Martin. Martin is bugging. Sometimes we have to give children grace. This is really beautiful. The world needs more teachers like this. You know, other teachers were humiliating them if they got things wrong. Look, she threw, she drew some happy faces. Mm, kids react to different methods. She's fixing his clothes. Little black kids are usually angry. We don't know how else to deal that young. If we're not angry, we're sad. Martin sounds so excited. I mean, obviously she needs to know the ABCs before she reads. I mean, like, I'll say that from now on, that's not right. That's not quite right. Hi again. Did you guys hear about the teacher that got the night job to help out his students? No, I didn't hear about that, Vanity. Ooh. 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 I like Tina's mom. Tina's mom said, uh, nigga, you do what you want, but you're not gonna take back none of my money. I put my money towards the school. So you wanna put your money towards another school? That's on you. Are you racist because you're white? Yes, block. I know that's, you know, not what you wanna hear, but we don't give a fuck about you over here on this channel. And now you can sit here and watch me talk about you and not leave any comments. Ooh, I know it's just gonna eat you up inside. Ooh, I know you're still watching. I know you're still watching. Yes. You're a racist. You can't say anything back. Ooh, type away. You're blocked. <laughs> like, we don't play. Right, like, you know you're a pig. <laughs> you know you're a pig. Typing in vain. <laughs> Boiling mad. Like, we block on this channel. It's not a democracy. It's a dictatorship. It's a cheerocracy. We block over here. 
We're going to block their other account, too. They're going to come back with their other account. We're going to block that one, too. Martin kind of reminds me of Blue Ivy in the face. OMG, you took away their poor freedom of speech. That's what they're going to come back from their, uh, their other account and say. Wow. So you guys practice censorship over here on this channel? Wow. Uh, I thought it was a free country. <laughs> like, no, it's not a free country over here. <laughs> She keeps telling him it's a free country. She keeps telling Martin it's a free country. Martin, you can do whatever you want. It's a free country. <laughs> right, she's getting through to Martin. She is. If you want to have, you know, potty breaks and recess like a baby. Oh, he scratched it out. Right, know your rights, Martin. <laughs> she's looking like, who the hell is this? Why do you want to know, white man? Martin is just enthusiastic. Who told you? Who said my mama was operating a school? Is she, this little girl. You have to ask her. Is she, is she which? And then she slammed the door in his face. Probably would have thrown the eraser at Martin by now. Learning is a group activity. Martin's a handful, but he's not a lost cause. Different kids need different approaches. This is upsetting me and my homegirl. His attitude nasty. Sir, she wasn't learning at the other place. You will never fail again. Now that's a word. Daddy bugging out too. Damn. Not gonna lie, them 100% happy faces, good job, stamps and stickers got me excited when I was little. Yes, the little red, the little 100% with the smiley face. Nothing makes you feel better as a kid. The ABCs are the cornerstone for reading comprehension. That is rude as fuck. She was in class for one day, <laughs> expect her to come back with a PhD, damn. Tina's mom is right, checked him. Yes, we had a lot of angry white teachers who hated us in their job. Tall, pretty black lady didn't take no shit. Oh, look, they got some new students. Truman and Francine. So we could think for ourselves. I'm at 5145 for anyone that wants a time check. $200 for a smile on my child's face ain't nothing. I'll pay it. <laughs> Martin's too busy to think. Martin is just too busy being a handful. We in here watching a sweet movie. They're trying to antagonize. Exactly, Monica. They're so weird. Oh, gee, you took away their poor freedom of speech. The Lord gave us two ears and one mouth. Oh, okay. Martin had a little comeback. That was beautiful, Martin. That was your little poem. Ooh, Marvin got the comeback. Since you know so much about dimes, you could give me a whole essay on the etymology of the word dime. Damn, he kicked the little girl. She's like, you want to hit somebody? Go on. I know you will. Go on. This just makes me want to see a movie with Blue Ivy. He just broke something and ran out.
This woman is amazing. Like I said, she's giving me Mother Teresa. Absolutely. No, you're right, Martin. It's a free country. He do got blue ivy brows, or she got his. I see blue a bit. He does look like her. Mm, the, who snitched on her? Right, I want to know who snitched. <laughs> These are Seren's kids. <laughs> that is how I want, want them to be. The neighborhood is a hater. Martin, I don't want to be here. Her, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want. Martin doesn't know what to do. Right. She was like, it's a free country. Like, you can leave. Like, and look, look at him coming to school, which is exactly what she said on the first day. Like, if he want to come, he's going to come. I like her. This is reminding me of Sister Act 2 a little bit. You know how Whoopi was like, I mean, you could leave if you don't want to take off the sunglasses and pay attention. You could go. I can't force you to be here. Kids really don't know what to do when you say something like that to them. They'd be stuck. Get off my porch, white man. It was that Karen teacher who called the fire department. Her little sweater. More kids are showing up. Hi, Shady Saint. This woman is amazing. <laughs> There's no way in hell I'm letting a kid kick me. This kid trying me. Look at this poor baby. He's hurting and she can see it. She's got love for the kids. I'm so touched. <laughs> Bree's like, OMG. <laughs> Bree, I know you're just at home with your little blood. Just like <sighs> feeling the feels. <laughs> Uh, Martin just needs more. He's being abrasive and rude, but I can see his pain. It's good the way she dealt with him. This woman is obviously better than Mother Teresa. He's projecting what's being done to him. Someone else would have straight up beat him in school. Martin got some problems at home that's come into the classroom. Oh, look at her getting on them. She's like, I really don't even give a fuck about recognition, but you're forcing me to have it. Yes, Sister Act 2. Vygotsky. Never heard of that saying. Vygotsky method. Where you don't try to change, to change the child or give them the answer. You meet them where they are and guide them to the correct answer. It's called scaffolding. It sounds like a therapy technique. That's one tough broad. You bet I am, mister. And another thing. She came back. Ooh. Ooh. Bitch. She real mad. The way she shows them affection, my heart. Now me, I don't nearly have the patience to be a teacher, but clearly Marvel was born for this. Martin is Blue's great, great uncle. She said, fuck your system, to be honest. She going off. Yes, she came back. You saw that, Nova? She opened the door and another thing. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm a tough ass broad. Throw a shoe at your head too. Oh, you can kind of hear the movie? Let me turn it down a bit. I thought that Morgan's face looked a little bit different. It's definitely the lack of freckles. I wonder why they covered his freckles up. Y'all say he's 83? So she's 13 years older than him. Well, then what? Then I left. She always reads these people. She came back. Don't mess with that little lady. Basically just reverse psychology method. I heard of it before. She cooking mad. You saw that, right? She slammed the pots, Nicole. She was mad. She is not cooking with love. I'd be scared to taste that food. She's hot. 
the kids with their little sweaters. <laughs> you gonna eat this mac and cheese and love it. Or did Morgan develop the freckles later on in life? Ooh. Oh, this is giving me flashbacks. Something like this happened to me. No, you will not. Something like that happened to me. My mother got me a Game Boy and I lost it. I barely even had it like a week. I left it in the movies. And I left it with all the games and everything because I had like a little bag that I kept the, the Game Boy and like all the games and everything. And I used to like take it with me everywhere. And I left it at the movies. And my mother made me feel so bad about it. She was just like, you are you were so careless with it. And, you know, it's, exp it's expensive. Like it's an expensive electronic. And, you know, there's kids that will like kill for that type of thing. And you were so careless with it. And I was just like... You're right. <laughs> like, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. I felt terrible. It does. It makes you feel horrible. And I, then I bought another one with my own money. I didn't even ask my mom to buy me another one. Her own kids at home are starting to get a little bit older. Mm. His little face. Did Morgan develop the freckles later on in life? My mother def had me wearing those little rope things for glasses. Oh, he didn't get the freckles until later in life. Picture from a teen, he didn't have them. I can see this film showing how she's so focused on other people's kids that she starts to let things slip with her own. Damn, all the games too, that sucks. I'm getting a little reminded of Kirkland watching this. A Sagittarius can be a bit careless. It makes you feel horrible. It does. My, my brother broke his Apple pen and felt so bad. She got you with the old guilt trip. She did, she really did. As a sag, yeah, I could be very, very clumsy and careless. My sister had a Game Boy Advance. She took it with us for summer camp and I accidentally dropped it between a crack on a tall ass rock. I was mortified and she was pissed. Look at this nice black father-son dynamic. Yeah, this is a nice conversation they're having right now, Nicole. My dad shouted at me once for spilling milk. I never forgot it. Something of this magnitude that she's doing can put a strain on your own children. I had a Game Boy Advance and my sister closed it in the car door, screen done. Whoops. Oh, she's trying to like bribe her. Oh, just give me control. I remember when I broke my pink DS and tried to blame my brother. How you blamed your brother? Very nice, another rarity in film. She's so cute. We need to normalize men and boys showing affection, also between fathers and older sons, not just small children. Separation anxiety. Beat it, police. She definitely put up her hand like. I mean, you're not being avoided. Oh, 
Chuck, good morning, Mrs. Collins. I brought the chalk you said we needed. Good morning, Mrs. Collins. We're coming to school to learn from you here at school. West Side Preparatory. I'm gonna go sit at my desk upstairs at the school. Like, damn, kids. <laughs> well, that's too bad, Clarissa, because I love you. Right, you just met me. Uh, I hate you, child. Do you know me well enough to hate me? He's a firefighter. He's definitely the same fire marshal from Lean On Me. I'm convinced. Maybe this is the same universe. Fire Marshal Steve needs to go. The cop could have scared the child. It is a school. He's meant he's supposed to be doing like a safety thing. And yeah, that's done by the fire marshal. That's like the fire department's job. You know, like making sure a place is like over capacity. And that's like the job of the fire department, not like the police. But it is a form of policing. Even though technically they're not police officers. I'm a child of the world. Look at him. He's looking like, oh, okay. Uh, she's teaching the kids. Mm, he better try to send his white kid here. Look. He just said, if my son had a teacher like you, like. Yeah. Mm. Fire Marshal Steve needs to go. The cops giving overseer vibes. Why is the fire department staring at her going spec, dude? He needs to dip. He's throwing off the vibe. Same universe. Love this red on yellow. He's impressed, but I don't care. Sorry, sir. It's a black only school. <laughs> he was like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be so annoyingly white. <laughs> Oh, look, she's looking at a building. I mean, he did have a point about safety, like especially like the rules to like have kids and have them in your house and teach them in schools and stuff like that. It's like so many rules. And the rules change per head count. Like if you have five kids, there's like a certain number of rules for that. If you have like 10 kids, the rules change. If you have 15 kids, the rules change again. If you have 20, they change again. Oh, no, she went to go see to one of the kids. Oh, I guess he can't come anymore. It looks like it's cold in there. They don't have no heat on. Gave her a list of changes that she can't afford. It's crazy how formative teachers are on people's development. Yes, and building guidelines too. But, right, like what's the problem? Like, can you be more specific? Right, who got to this woman? Like, what's the problem? Like, I don't understand. Right, like, why don't you want him to continue to come to my school? What's the problem? Uh, it's definitely smelling like some sabotage. Who's sabotaging her?
Mm. Oh, she's jealous. He's happy at school. People really become jealous when their kids be happy with other people, though. This is like a real thing. She's jealous. People be confused by certain things. She's like, I want the same thing. She's jealous because she feels like he's surpassing her and he's happy. And she's obviously miserable. Yes, envy and jealousy is such an ugly trait. It really is. People really do this. I've literally seen this happen. People get like jealous that their child is like happy and progressing. They would rather they could be home with them and be miserable than be with somebody else and be happy. Even if that person is like a teacher. Do you guys remember that episode of, um, fuck, now I can't think of the show. It was one of those kid shows where one of the kids got like, a, oh gosh, why can't I think of what show it is? So where one of the kids like got a new teacher and the kid became like obsessed with the teacher because the teacher was just like blowing their mind and like opening their mind to like all different types of things. And the parent became like jealous. Because they're like, the kids like always talking about the teacher and they're like always looking up to the teacher. Like, you know, like they don't look up to me anymore. And like, I'm supposed to be their parent. Like, I'm supposed to be their, you know, I'm supposed to be their whole world. And like now they're looking to somebody else, not me. That should throw some parents for a loop. Yes, thank you. It was the Bernie Mac show. Thank you. With Vanessa, Vanessa got hooked on a teacher and the teacher taught her the phrase like, I contain multitudes and Bernie didn't like that. Bernie was so jealous. Even though Vanessa was doing good and she was thriving. But Bernie like wasn't sure he wanted her to like continue going to this teacher. He like felt some type of way. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Thank you, queen. She was being threatened and she's jealous. Hi, Eros. I'm watching the Marva Collins true story. We're over an hour in. We're at about an hour and 12 minutes. I did put a link on YouTube. I mean, in the community tab on YouTube because I'm watching it on YouTube. <laughs> That's not what's happening. He's still your baby. She was jealous. This is actually really sad. It's like a sense of foreboding of her son replacing her with another woman. Envy and jealousy is such an ugly trait. A lot of people project their jealousy problems and insecure. It's a babysitter or something that they really love and then the mom gets jealous. It seems counterproductive because it's like, well, don't you want a babysitter that your child would love and bond with? But a lot of people get jealous because they feel like, no, I'm the parent. It should be all about me. <laughs> Parenthood seems weird. Absolutely happens. This also happens in Matilda. Yeah, they were just like, they could not understand Matilda. The Bernie Mac show was the episode of this situation. Parents get jealous when their child's world expands. Like their world is expanding beyond me. Oh, 
Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Sister had an episode like that, too. It did. Ray didn't like how Tamara and Tia had a cool younger teacher and tried to get him fired. And like I said, it seems so kind of productive, especially for Tamara, because Tamara hated school and hated learning. So it's like you fi Tamara finally has a teacher that like has her engaged and you're jealous and you try to get him fired. Like this is like a common issue. Very counterproductive. Parenthood is definitely a journey. <laughs> They're only supposed to love me. Uh, I was just about to bring in the... Jaren, you said that's like you and your family. Ray was bugging. One-on-one -on -one had an episode like that too. Yep, I remember that one where Flex became jealous of Brianna's teacher. very common theme uh, i'm not close of like parents being jealous when like kids find a a mentor figure that's not a parent i'm not even close to watching all of sicily's filmography but this is one role she's played that she's bright in spirit yeah like she's not downtrodden i'm really liking this movie a lot look at her boosting these kids up If you're a good parent, you should want your child to outgrow and outshine you. You're always supposed to want better for your babies. I would hope that, I mean, I'm sure it's easier than you would think, but I would hope that that wouldn't occur. I don't know, you know, like I don't have kids and having kids seems like, having kids seems like very primal and emotional. Cause I have friends that have kids that say, you know, they really be like, no, it, people say that when you have kids, like things change. And you just find yourself like acting and thinking in ways that you never would have thought. Here's a beautiful Tiffany lamp. Look at his little, he got a little plaid robe on too. Everybody got all these robes and house coats. Go. This is a great movie. I also love this role for Sicily. I love seeing Sicily act with children. This and Bustin' Loose are two of my favorites. Bet the mom didn't have to bribe that girl to go to school no more. Oh, that's that's so weird. My mom has never been like that. She's been pretty supportive of my interests or the people I look up to. My mom was too, but, but I feel like my mother, like my mother was a young mom. And I feel like my mom being a young mom and a single mom probably like played a part in it too. Cause my mom was constantly like giving me to my grandma. I, like, I don't think she was ever jealous of my grandma. Like my mom was like, please, please take her. Like, here you go, have fun. <laughs> like, I'll come pick you up in three months, have a great time. Like she never, never wanted. I was always very independent and my mother was not a clingy, a clingy parent with me. I think she, because, but I think that's also because my grandmother my maternal grandmother was like very clingy with my mom because so my mom was the youngest of three and my mom's two older sisters, they had an age gap. So my mom was like the super baby and my maternal grandmother was like very clingy with my mom, I guess, because she was like the baby. And to the point where I think my mom felt like my grandma was like overbearing and my mom rebelled really hard against my maternal grandmother, like climbing out the window, sneaking out, just all that. So I think my mom tried to give me a lot of emotional space because she was like really hyper aware of like not wanting to be like an overbearing parent. So my mom was never 
like that type of parent with me, like jealous and overbearing. She was never like that. But I didn't feel like too independent, <laughs> you know, like my mom was also there for me. She like found the balance, I think. She, but like I said, she was like super hyper aware of it, which in a way that I think a lot of people aren't. Because like as adults, my mom and my grandma did not have a good relationship really until I, I was born. And so I think my mom was like really trying to avoid that type of thing with us. Keep it going. <laughs> Mac and cheese again. Look at his face. <laughs> Mm. Not Clarence. House coast for days. Martin been quiet for a while. What's he doing? <laughs> Different strokes had an episode like that too. Look, the dad is finally realizing that the school is working for Tina. It's working. The students range, range in age here at the school. My mom was the same. She let the village help raise me. Yes, exactly, Vanny. Like cousins, aunts, my grandmothers. My mom was like, anybody that want to pitch in and help me raise this kid, come on. <laughs> there goes Martin. That's good. Overbearing parents do more harm than good. Whoops. I think for my mom, she lost her mom really young, so she held on really tight and wanted to show she loved me. It worked though, she's my favorite human. I'm definitely gonna do one, queen. My mom also taught me how to be independent, but spoiled me and my siblings. Look at the baby Rita and see dad. <laughs> they finna get another $200 from that family. Yes, yeah, sit with the baby, listen to the baby read. The dad shut the hell up now, didn't he? Let Tina read, <laughs> snatching everyone. The kids elevating and moving on up. The dad finally gets it. This is a labor of love. <laughs> if I was a tall, pretty lady, I'd be looking at him with my hands on my hips and say, now what? Yes, Brie, flourish. Blue Ivy is doing it. <laughs> Martin is reading the tale of two cities. My mom wasn't clingy, just protective. She didn't trust anyone with her kids. Right, who is this? Another white man on her porch, Brooke. Who is this? Same, I was always spending the night at my grandma's. Hi Paris, we're watching the Marvel Collins true story. I'm at an hour and 22 minutes in. It's on YouTube, I did put a link in the community tab. Uh. Oh, he's a reporter. Acknowledge yourself, dude. They wary. He should have waited at the door. My aunts, cousins, friends, everything. My mom always sent me out. My mom was definitely like, you know, I'm a young single parent. So anybody that wants to pitch in can help, you know, in the family. Which I'm glad for because that led to me having like close relationships with my cousins and both my grandmothers and my grandpa before he passed away. Look at this man. Is this is this hair? Is this mutton chops? What's happening on the side of this man's face? He's serving young Snape. Some white guys really have this young Snape look. Like this is an archetype of like white man. This like hair. <laughs> Pay attention all in this man business. His name won't be on your paycheck. Oh, look at her little yarn, her little yarn, her little yarn yellow loops. Cause Hera said so. 
Marvel was ready. Oh, a reporter. She teaching hygiene to you. Oh, you're gonna double snow? Good luck, Paris. Why didn't anyone call to make an appointment? My mom would take me to grandma's or leave me at home. Didn't like my aunt and her kids. So I was like, nah, I'm good. Used to hurt her feelings, but no thanks. <laughs> All the girls' hair done. Hi, Xavier. I used to have those yarn hair bows. <laughs> yeah, this man got a weak chin. <laughs> he looks sinister. I don't trust him. Serving real Slytherin vibes. Like, this is a look. Like, you know, him, Adam Driver, who also has a tendency to play a dickhead. It's like the young Snape look. I mean, I know some people are into this look. There was a somebody in an episode of Black Mirror that had the same look, too. Positive reinforcements make my heart flutter with pride. I don't trust him either. He was looking at the kids strange. Very much giving Adam Driver. I was thinking the same thing, the boy in blue. I was like, what if he writes like some mean shit? Never know. We'll have to see. What if he slanders her? No, she don't get no money. She don't get nothing. Yeah, we publicity complaining. You are just getting so smart. She looks so cute with her little khakis and her little button up on. She might be my favorite one. She's like, they don't even give us. Mm. No. She's like, I'm just trying to teach. I'm just trying to teach. Like. Right. The kids came to me. Right. I didn't pick no gifted kids. I know the kids gifted. Yeah, we don't like his smarmy lips because he got that young Snape. Kylo look. That's how they look. They just look evil. Oh, they getting ready to take this test. Does Tina feel like she can't take the test? You can take the test, Tina. You're smart enough to take the test. She doesn't feel she doesn't want to take it. She don't want to take it. She's scared she's gonna fail. Tina. Tina don't wanna take the test. Test anxiety is real. She was hard at work, she's too cute. Yeah, right, you must have handpicked them. Her little purple bows. He's like, you chose the best of the best. She's like, all kids are the best. Oh, heck, a standardized bias test. He looks greasy. She got test taking anxiety. She's scared to leave. I get test anxiety too. She's scared to fail. She's scared to pass. Like She's like, I don't want to take the test. Can you imagine though, if like you're the one that fails? And so they say like, the school can't be recognized because you failed, oh, I feel horrible. Me. Now. She's like, don't even, she just told them, don't even worry about this test. Just do your best. Especially you, Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy Martin. Tina was me in high school. I used to have full on panic attacks before walking in the test room. Oh my gosh, really? That's so, oh, wow. From I did have test anxiety, but it was never that bad. 
I'll be honest, most of the outfits these kids are wearing, I will wear myself in my big age. Ha, <laughs> Brooke! I love the 70s. I will forever remember that Good Times episode where Michael refused to take a test because he said it was biased against black children. Oh, look, he did write a piece. He wrote something nice. She better walk in there with the newspaper like, give me my shit. These children taking a high school test. I used to have test anxiety until I applied myself. Once I started participating in class regularly and doing my homework, tests became easy. Look, see, they finally gonna get some money. That type of stuff is way too much pressure on a little kid. I'd rather have test anxiety than not care at all. I have mild anxiety when it comes to math and science tests. Old dude wrote a good article, Blackboard Magic. <laughs> he came through. Thanks, weak chin. <laughs> I mean, it's great that he wrote something nice, but I would have tried to reach out to a black reporter first. I mean, they probably didn't have any black reporters working there. Yeah, she's going doing stock and financing. Also, I'm pretty sure she, well, they didn't like specifically say, but made it seem like she sent letters to a bunch of people and he's the only one that responded, which I do feel like that doesn't get enough talk because you have a lot of people that try to reach out to like, Especially like black, I don't, I guess like black media. I don't know if I want to say black media, but you have people that try to reach out and they never hear back or they never, they don't get anything. And then they might get something back from somebody that's white. And then people will be like, well, why didn't you reach out to somebody black? A lot of the times you never know. There's always this assumption that like people didn't even try when that's not always the case. Mm, test anxiety. I never cared about my grades. <laughs> now she can get those things done for fire safety. Now they can't tell her nothing. And now the school teacher she left at the older school will come lurking. I was a paper and research kid, way more than a test taker. <laughs> they doing stock, stock lessons. She's the original Robin Hood. Mm. Um, yeah, I think she's like giving the kids age appropriate work, Alexandra. Since she's the only teacher, she's probably like able to tweak it seems that the kids are on the same page in terms of lessons, but she probably twe tweaks the individual work. Like, you know, one room schoolhouse, you have all different ages. <laughs> A merchant of Alabama. Look at that long division. I don't miss it. Martin is doing well. Proud of that little bolt of lightning. She's teaching everything. Famous Amos. I want her skirt. I'm sure she'll probably like move the kids out once they get a little too old. Wow, she took them to the stock exchange. She's like, the kids don't need to go to the zoo again. Yeah, she took them to the stock exchange. <laughs> Game sock lesson. They're all interested in buying and selling those socks. Wow, she just connected the Merchant of Venice to stocks. And modern finances. That's a cool field trip. She 
She's telling them all about everything. What do the people in the red do? What do the people in the green do? Yeah, this is cool. Look at the kids. This is exciting. She's good, would have loved to be in her class, yes. She's like a black Miss Frizzle. Only she's real, because Marvel Collins is a real person. Yeah, I remember my grandfather told me that there were classrooms that had students of various ages who all had to learn different age appropriate things at the same time. No lie, I never like long division. Look at their excited faces. This is too cute. Look at them at the stock exchange. This is a cool field trip. She's good, would have loved to be in her class. Very cool. This is method teaching, yes. Now you remember the Merchant of Venice? This is how it works now, children. This is definitely method teaching. Awesome field trip. This is something I would have appreciated in middle high school. Her class seems dope. Oh, look at her negotiating. You better make these financial negotiations. Tina just became the household accountant. Oh, uh, before we make any major purchases in this household, we need to run it by my daughter because she's the one that runs the finances. Oh, they having a surprise party. The test scores are excellent, of course. That's a big house. Okay, Tina, her parents fine. They sneaking, Tina killing it. She's a CPA, they're throwing her a surprise party. Ah, uh, about to cry tears of joy. Tina found her voice. Oh, look, they got her a little cake. It said, thank you for caring. And to celebrate their test scores. Look, she don't even want the party. These kids are so cute. The baby's giving her a party. <laughs> I love how Tina fine ass daddy saw the light and turned it around. That just made me want some cake. Yeah, you wasn't. But now we put Tina in charge of the finances, so we just want to thank you. Ah! <laughs> he said, oh, don't worry. Tina got the best price for it. Don't worry. <laughs> we put her in charge of the, of, the math, of the math and the finances. Don't worry. Right. Thanks, Marva. We rich now. Tina hooked us up. We've, we've made some solid investments, you know. She's doing good. Oh, look. I definitely want some cake now, too. Oh, look at Tina. This is definitely looking like the blueprint for these urban school movies that came later, except with the white savior. Look at her daddy crying! Oh, so nice! Oh, I'm not crying, y'all crying. I don't have a little tear, y'all have the tears. I'm not chopping onions. Look at her daddy with the lone tear. Well, we've got to get back to work. Miles to go before we sleep. Tina found her voice so adorable. Dad went from saying he wanted his baby out of the school to wanting his daughter to make 
financial decisions for the household. Now I want cake. This movie has me smiling. She made a real difference in their lives. She was the real deal. Stop this. I need Kleenex and hugs. I want some cake. The daddy's so proud. Tina on her way to get that PhD. A spelling bee. The daddy loves his daughter. I'm crying. So touching. <laughs> Who's cutting onions in the chat? A bug flew in my eyes all. Black joy in education. Oh, look. We're getting the little update. Of course, Tina wants to be a teacher. Yes, update. Oh, wow. The school became overcrowded. Yes. Oh, wow. Her mother teaches there, too. Martin Luther Jones. A pilot or a judge? Yes, Martin. They better give us these true black success stories. Yes, and she stayed at her school. 200 students. 800 on the waiting list. Yay, they got their own building. movie uh, this was a great movie to kick off hidden figures which I thought it would be these success stories young writers amazing she declined Reagan yes that's what's up her legacy lived on through her students black success now I want to cry I'm crying for real for real Yes, Blue Ivy full scholarship to cry to college. I love it. Tens across the board. Uh, feel all warm and tingly. So glad Cicely did this movie. If you had the opportunity to be secretary of education, would you take it? Not if I felt like I could continue making a difference and making more of a difference at my own school, which she probably did. She probably felt like if she left, she would be abandoning her students. Wow, Ruben Cannon was the casting director. Cicely gave us so much. This was great. I just got to the end. She has several schools. This was so nice. This was a really good movie. And I feel like this was a really great movie to start us off for Hidden Figures, which I thought it would be. So this was really excellent. And Cicely, I just love seeing Cicely. I never saw this movie before. I actually never even heard of this teacher before. So this is definitely, definitely a hidden figure. I'll be doing a hidden figure um, on, absolutely, I'll be doing a hidden figure on Marva Collins because I really enjoyed this. This was really, really nice. Um, I do still, I'm still keeping a list of some other uh, Cicely Tyson movies that we could poss possibly watch for upcoming uh, Bees Bakes as well because a lot of people made some really good suggestions but I'm really happy that we sort of started off with this one I know a lot of you guys want to watch a woman called Moses where she plays Harriet Tubman um, I've had some trouble scrounging up a link but if you guys want to look for a link for that we could and um yeah today's the last day of January so starting tomorrow we'll be doing daily videos <laughs> Nicole says what I'm saying is I need a list yes yeah, so you can give me a list um, I think I saw that you put a list in, oh, it's on Prime, okay. I think I saw that you put a list in Discord. I haven't gotten the chance to look at it yet, but I will look at it. Um, and I'm totally fine with a list, especially since, you know, Cicely passed. And a lot of the times when our artists pass, we like to look at some of their stuff in retrospect. So I think this was a great first movie to start off with and a great movie for, for Hidden Figures. And I'm really looking forward to... February. <laughs> Good luck with daily videos. I know daily videos are so hard, but I'm looking forward to starting. So yes, everyone have a good week. Have a happy February. See you guys tomorrow for daily videos. Oh, uh, what's the cash app? The cash app before I go is uh, dollar sign, capital S, E, R, E, N, capital S, E, N, S, E, I. And otherwise, just put it. 
See you guys. Bye.